Disney is back on top the Nielsen charts, but it might not be the way that you would anticipate. The headlines look really good for the House of Mouse, but what about the financials? Today, we're going to share with you the information that reveals not all is well, and perhaps as the ratings swell, Disney might, well, feel a little badly about it after all. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel that is changing hearts and minds simply by telling the truth and diving deep, bringing you the kind of things you need to understand what's going on in all things that should be fun. Today we're talking about ratings, streaming ratings, cable ratings, network ratings, specifically though, live sports ratings. And we're talking about how much money Disney is spending to try to be winning in the ratings war. Meantime, if you want to know who's the real winner of all this, well, it just might be YouTube. Yes, the place you're listening to is dominating, not just in ratings, but in profits. Folks, click the like button and you're going to find out in a master class what's really going on when it comes to the stuff you're watching on your TV. All right, let's go to the next news section, and that is Disney has reclaimed its spot as the top producer of content. But folks, we're to tell you, it might not all be good. You'll understand as we get underway with this one. Here's what we've got out of the wrap. Disney reclaims top spot on Nielsen Media Distributor Gauge for September as football heats up. ESPN saw a 101% uptick in viewing, boosting Disney to a 17% increase from August. And folks, if you watch this channel uh, studiously, as we know you all do, you knew this was coming because we actually told you this was coming. And we knew it was coming because Valiant Renegade had a conversation with me and we talked about it and knew about this. So this is no surprise. Laurie Seitz is the author. After two months of sliding down Nielsen's media distributor gauge, Disney reclaimed its top spot as football heated up. As the NFL and NCAA kicked off their fall football seasons, the Walt Disney Company accounted for 11.3% of TV usage in September. It posted gains over YouTube, which took the number two spot with 10.6. Remember that YouTube was in the number one spot the month prior, as well as NBC Universal, which took third place with 9.3. After YouTube dominated viewing in July and NBC Universal led the list in August thanks to the Olympics, Disney returned to lead the media distributors list as it did in June and May, with September marking the third consecutive monthly lead change. Disney also saw a 17% increase in September. That's largely due to viewing upticks for ESPN, which saw a 101% increase, and ESPN2, which scored a 165% increase. There was also a 25% boost seen by its ABC broadcast affiliates. All right, so let's go now to Nielsen, because, well, and Nielsen is acting all kinds of strange for me, so folks, apologies, we'll have to scrollify down to where I already was. Uh, but we can see the overall streaming percentages here. You can see that Disney truly has cannibalized Hulu. Uh, we, we, I'm actually glad that Nielsen uh, had a technical glitch there. Jonas, this is so important. Uh, I'm really happy this happened, actually. Hulu was doing dramatically better than Disney+. Plus, and that's really, really good for Disney. Because when Hulu is doing better than Disney+, Plus, Hulu has a much higher revenue per user. They call that ARPU. When Disney+, Plus takes the viewership from Hulu because they've integrated it, cannibalized it. We talked about it. This is what they were going to do. Disney's making far less money when Disney Plus is in the lead versus Hulu. So just want to point that out. Any, any thoughts on that, Jonas, before we go no, down to no, the... This, okay. is, this is what it's been from the beginning. Hulu has been an ad-based platform from the start, and people are used to seeing commercials on Hulu. They see less commercials on Hulu than they do on cable, and that's the point. Hulu was a slow burn where you watched ads while you watched television and you watched your favorite television on Hulu. So it's a it's a low friction point to go from Hulu from television to Hulu. Disney Plus, they're trying to integrate ads into a platform that has most of its success with Bluey, which they've said they're not going to put commercials on kids content, which is an interesting take. That's all I'm going to say about that. Well, I'll I'll say this too, you know, Hulu was sitting every single month above 3% of total streaming. Disney Plus was sitting under 2%. Now that's changed because Disney Plus is integrating Hulu, cannibalizing it. The problem is Hulu makes more money, 
So as Hulu drops and Disney Plus grows, Disney's having less revenues. All right, let's scroll down now to what we really wanted to get, which was the monthly TV viewing by distributor. So no matter if you watch it on YouTube or on cable, no matter if you watch it on uh, Paramount, wherever you might watch it, Netflix, it's not measuring that. It's measuring who made that content in the first place. So if you watch ESPN football on YouTube, it's going to the Disney company in this, in this metric we have. Disney has seen a major increase up to 11.3%, putting YouTube in second place at 10.6%. And that's all driven by football. Disney would likely be struggling trying to stay out of third place if not for football. Now, the problem for Disney, if you're an investor, is that if you are sitting in first place because of football, you have to understand they are paying out the mousy yin-yang to have access to football. The contracts for live sports are so expensive now. And what is YouTube doing? Now, we know that YouTube does have some sports contracts, but that's not the largesse of what YouTube does. The vast majority of the 10.6% of all viewership coming in from YouTube is from shows such as this. Shows like PBD, shows like Timcast, shows like The Young Turks, shows like uh, Mr. Beast, if anybody's still watching him, and we think they are. Shows that someone else paid to make and YouTube just siphons the profits. And we don't mind that. They got to make money somehow. But Disney is paying huge amounts for all of their content. They're getting 11.3. YouTube largely doesn't pay anything, and they're getting 10.6. It's a much better financial system that YouTube has in place. Right. Channel, and, and, go ahead. It would be very interesting to see these figures if they had to break them out with, with ESPN separated from the rest of the Walt Disney Company, because I think the answer would be very clear of where the eyeballs are versus, uh, you know, what Disney creates themselves for people to watch and what they just point the camera at because they paid for the rights to it. Well said. Culture, Marvin, Erica, who wants to weigh on in this one? What do we got? Well, I mean, you look at this and it's all, I mean, it's all semantics in the way you look at it, right? You know, the Walt Disney Company is going to be able to tout that, yay, tra-la-la, we're producing the most viewed content. But in reality, you know, football is the great disruptor, right? I, I mean, we at the end of the day, people that are supporters of Disney will tout this without any context. And that is what they're counting on because tech it's all a technicality. Technically, we're the biggest thing out there again. So that should, you know, instill confidence in investors. But the problem with investors is they don't tend to look at the surface level, pro. They tend to dig down deep and see what's actually going on here. And I don't think I don't think investors are going to be fooled by this. Marvin, you're just sore because it's not pro wrestling that drives these kinds of ratings. Uh, look, at the end of the day, pro you want to talk to people that, that talk about technicalities. It's pro wrestling fans. My God. But that's neither here nor there. Well, you know, maybe these Disney numbers are just as fake as pro wrestling, right? Well, this is true. Well, yeah, they heard they, about as much. They are in a way, though, because, again, this this is going to have to they don't take into account the ROI, right? The return on the investment, because when you buy these rights contracts, they are not insubstantial. They are incredibly expensive. So when you are looking at that, um, what did it cost them to get back into that number one spot? And, you know, to be fair, they didn't really create the content. The NFL did. They just paid for the rights to air it. So maybe maybe that's something that, that, that we should focus on. And it doesn't hurt that they also have most of the college football. So it wasn't, it wasn't just pro football. It was college football and, and some other things that propelled them into the top spot. But, you know, it, it, at what cost? Okay, so let's, let's take that as an example, Culture. I, we won't talk about this channel. We'll talk about your channel, and I'll do it because you're too humble to talk about yours, but I'll say this. You're getting tons and tons and tons of views over on Culture Casino. You're also getting tons and tons and tons of views on that game place. Yeah. All right. How much is YouTube uh, funding your efforts? How much, how much do they give you, Culture, to run your channels? 30% uh, less than if I was able to deliver the content myself. Okay, so, so in other words, YouTube is not paying you. You're paying yeah. YouTube. Yeah, but you're still happy because you're still getting a, a decent enough revenue stream and YouTube's happy. But now compare that to Disney, right? So YouTube doesn't pay you anything. You give YouTube content. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Disney is paying a ton of money to the NFL. Disney's paying a ton of money to 
the SEC, for example, right? The college football organizations, they're paying tons of money to achieve what YouTube is doing almost for free. Well, again, I mean, if you can have somebody else do the work for you, take advantage of it. And again, I look, I, it, I, along with everybody else here, doesn't ma mind that, you know, we're, that we're being taken advantage of because it gives us an opportunity to talk about the things we're passionate about. And right, it's symbiotic. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's symbiotic. Okay, Coach, yeah. let me toss you this then, okay? And anybody yeah. else weigh in? Eric, fi Erica, feel uh, free to hop in on this one. Mm -hmm. Why would Disney not reach out to Star Wars Theory and say, listen, we got, we got some problems. Our Star Wars stuff is collapsing. Mm -hmm. You you have a successful movie, fan movie that you made about Darth Vader. Would you just make that and put it on Disney Plus? And we'll give you some of the advertising revenues. We're not going to fund it. We're not going to pay it. But we'll give you some of the fun. We'll give you some of the advertising revenue. Even f swap it, right? Switch it. Invert it. Disney gets seventy percent. Star Wars theories get gets thirty. Sure. Why? Why would they not do something like that at this point? Well, they hate it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's ideal. It's ideological. Right. And, you know, and he, he did an unauthorized thing in the first place, which, you know, a lot of these media companies are, you know, zealously protect their IP, but he's setting that aside. Um, no, I pro I'm with you. I mean, if you are a wizened, uh, CEO or an innovator that sees a future in, uh, creator content, um, that's what you would do. I'm actually surprised nobody nobody's done that other than these platforms like obviously, you know, Twitch and and Rumble and YouTube and others. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, technically, you could start your own Roku channel. I don't know if anybody's tried to explore that. I did. I spent the better part of 18 months trying to figure out what would be the best and most effective way to go about putting my own channel up on, you know, Roku television. But um i look you can still do that you just need an army of technical people to build the front end for you and it, were you to be successful you certainly could do that but why a, a a a studio like warner brothers doesn't have creator content section on max i don't know why doesn't why doesn't paramount plus i mean gosh think about the better star trek material that we've seen like star trek continues with vic Mignogna. you know these are these are amazingly well produced short episodes of of what honor a television that fans would eat up with a spoon and featuring uh you know an, an actor that's no longer with us as a matter of fact in in those episodes but hey, I just, easy culture you're gonna you're gonna inspire mark to do another tweet easy you you uh, name a deceased person he'll find a way to politicize it no uh, that's true but i but i i, I mean you know w w they did lose grant grant's not going to be returning if they were able to reboot it but what they could do like i said is they could they could help vic make that show you know well, hey look we can't can't pay you directly we'll pay you you know this amount of percentage of whatever the value of your content's worth but you know make this show for us so pro the answer to the question is i don't know why they're not uh, they don't they be, mostly it's got to be political because they just don't want to give a platform to somebody that they may disagree with politically which everything's is everything's political to their detriment mm -hmm. which is right. which is bad you know what's Very amazing star, star wars used to be the most welcoming community for fan-made projects george never cared about that george never struck down things like troopers all the different fan films that popped up the second that disney got their hands on the ip all of a sudden stuff that had been up for decades all of a sudden started getting shot down off the internet and it, yeah. it's just despicable what they've uh, done with it, it. Lucasfilm, they've taken it from the fans yeah star wars uh, lucasfilm used to run their own fan film uh yeah. award ceremonies with, yeah with with George Lucas's involvement is not just something that he said, yeah, I guess you guys can go do that while I'm out doing something else. He was actually involved in it. And, and one of the, one of the films that got an award early on was one where it's basically two kids playing with lightsabers and they fight their mom. Who's dressed up like she's a Sith and they win popsicles. It's not like it was things that were, you know, uh, had to be groundbreaking video. It was something that was very much, you're a fan of Star Wars. You're cultivating a fan, a, a, a fandom of Star Wars. Uh, then, then they're going to uh, recognize that. So it was something that was very grassroots. It was, mm -hmm. but it was also recognized by the actual studio. The closest thing that Disney has right now is D23 Expo, where they have there's not a child in sight at any of these things because nope. they're too expensive. Uh, they. And they're they're not, not they're mind numbingly boring most of the time. They're 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 a fan convention without the without the celebrities essentially. 
Right. And and, and they switched it so much too. They're so anti fan that Erica's afraid to put her hair up in buns just because <laughs> they might come after for the Leia thing. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, it Disney, gives me a headache. <laughs> yeah, Disney Disney would copyright just putting your hair in buns at this point. They do it. Don't don't doubt them. Now, Disney just can't get out of their own way. You know, on the one hand, they're creatively bankrupt. And then on the other hand, you know, like I said, they just can't get out of their own way. So like, you know, they just love shooting themselves in the foot. And at this point, just, I'm just kind of numb to it all now at this point, you know. Indeed. We but, all are. But well, you know by what? By the way, sorry, sorry. I have to say this. Uh, the last time that they did official fan film awards was in 2018 at Star Wars Celebration, and that was the end of it. So mm-hmm. they they hate the idea of the fans actually doing anything themselves. Because well, they're they, making things better. I mean, have you ever watched Batman versus Darth Vader on Bat and the Sun? I mean, it's really good. Well, I went Ninja <laughs> they, Turtles versus Darth Vader. That I, would they, be even better. They would never I, allow that the, now. The fan film... Um, that I, I I talked to both the producer and the director of uh, called Gordon, which is actually on YouTube. You can go watch; it's brilliantly done. Is is uh, is 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 amazing. If you get an opportunity to see that, um, you know the the basically Gordon is it's kind of a reflection of no half measures, and you know it, it, it it's a beautifully well written, a beautifully written, well performed. Uh, like single shot uh, feeling kind of a thing, very drama driven, um, it, you know, uh, thing. I, I I don't know how else to describe it. It's just it's well it's just well thought out, and that should be on Max. That should be on Max right now. Well, folks, we've come to the end of another video of pure excellence and fun, explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. That's what we hope you believe we've just done. And why should you believe it? Well, because we've done our very best to make it so. To be true, to be factual, and to do what the mainstream so-called access journalists simply won't. Folks, you can help share this out across the fruited plains of YouTube by clicking the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It is the notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And folks, as we get ready to say sayonara for now, we ask that you keep learning. Keep growing, and wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep having fun.